Just off the west coast, a mysterious illness has been devastating marine life for over a decade. An epidemic that has wiped out entire populations. Sea star wasting disease. The name is grim, but accurate. Once infected, a sea star will literally waste away in a matter of days. So they'll get these lesions, so it sort of looks like their tissue is dissolving. And at, at the end of the disease, it really will just look like a pile of mush. Scientists first noticed something was wrong 12 years ago, right here in BC. Some of the first clues came from these, sunflower sea stars. So they're these amazing animals. Um, they're like, for a sea star, they're super charismatic. So they are as big as an extra large pizza. So like very large sea stars. In 2013, their populations plummeted in Howe Sound, just northwest of Vancouver. Within months, the disease had spread down the west coast to Mexico. And not long after, we saw it up around Alaska. We lost 90% of them from Mexico to Alaska, which is a huge number. And our estimate was over 5 billion sea stars were lost during this disease outbreak. Today, the sunflower sea star is listed as critically endangered, and at least 26 sea star species are known to be affected. Over the past 12 years, scientists have seen the effects of this disease firsthand thousands of times, including Jeff Shaw, a diver and biologist at the Vancouver Aquarium. In recent years, I've only seen sort of smaller, more juvenile sized ones, um, but they are a lot harder to come by than they used to be. But it wasn't only out in the wild. We actually had it wipe out all the sea stars in our lab um, when it came through, so uh, it came pretty quickly. Researchers say we've seen die-offs with similar symptoms before, in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, but never this intense or over such a wide area. Yet after all this time, the cause of the disease remains a mystery, in part because it's hard to figure out what we're looking for. We don't know what is normal for a sea star. So what bacteria should we find in a sea star? What virus should we find? We're, we're actually beginning to learn that, but we didn't before this outbreak. And so it made it a little bit more difficult to pinpoint what was different. But one thing is clear. Climate change is a major threat as marine heat waves become more common. The higher the temperature, the more likely the onset of the disease, and the harder it is for an infected sea star to come back from that. But now, researchers have good news. There may be a sea star safe haven right here in BC. Gaiman says it all started when her team spoke with the Central Coast Indigenous Resource Alliance. They told us that they were finding big, large, high-density populations of sunflower stars. And um, that was not something we were seeing elsewhere. Together, they found the secret lies in BC's many fjords. In the winter, Arctic outflow winds rush through the narrow channels, mixing the water, cooling it, and adding oxygen, all of which is great for sea stars. But in the summer, surface waters across the Pacific start to warm back up, which can be deadly. But in the fjords, runoff from mountaintop glaciers causes a layer of fresh water to form over the top. And sea stars really don't like fresh water. They don't do well there. So they stay below that fresh water in the cold water, and they're held away from getting to the surface where warm water is. So it's like a force field on the top of the water, keeping them down for their own good. Yeah, exactly. Researchers say this is good news, but it's not a silver bullet. Every year, I get really happy when the Arctic art flows happen because I'm like, oh good, another year for these sea stars and another time. And then I get very worried when we don't have enough snowpack because um, I think both of those things are really important for this habitat. Of course, this work isn't just about helping out sea stars. Tons of research shows that these animals are critical to their ecosystems and other marine life. Without them, many coastal areas have lost their healthy kelp forests. Areas like Howe Sound now resemble barren underwater wastelands. Scientists say those threats are what make this knowledge so valuable. It can support the work other conservationists are already doing, 
like breeding programs. If we're going to try and raise animals and put them back in the ocean, we maybe really need to think about the temperature conditions that they're going to be experiencing when they get out there. There's no question there's still a long way to go to help these species recover. But scientists say this is a much needed glimmer of hope. Darius Madavi, CBC News, Vancouver.